Oké. Okay. Kan iedereen mij uh, horen? Yeah. All right. Oké. Okay. Uh, I've been asked to do this in English for uh, a screencast. So uh, today I'm uh, going to talk about uh, contributing to the community. I'm going to give you an introduction to Drupal stardom and how to become a Drupal rockstar, so to speak. This is uh, a session for uh, beginners and people who are enthusiasts about community stuff and who want to start out but don't really have a clue about uh, where to start, what to do, how to contribute. Uh, um, I want to give you a few general ideas on, uh, on what you can do for the community. And uh, I'm going to do this from my own experience as a, as a contributor, of course. So that's uh, my approach. So who am I? Okay. Um, my name is uh, Matthias van der Maasen, aka NetSensei, on Drupal.org uh, and online in general. I'm a full-time Drupal ninja for a company called Xeo, Belgium. Um, my handle is Netsensei say uh, on Twitter, and I have, of course, my own website, my own blog, colada.de. So I'm going to talk about the community. So first question, what is a community? Because you hear a lot about community, and there are a few questions that need to be raised. First, what is this community? How do I join? Why should I join? Uh, what's next? There are, of course, a few keywords, like community contributing. There's always a few sayings in the, in the Drupal community, like the drop is always moving. People are always talking about this drop. So what is this? That's us moving forward all the time, working on Drupal, evolving as a whole, as a community, as a group. There's, of course, the famous tagline, Come for the software, stay for the community. And there is, of course, our famous uh, leader, Chris Beutart. And so there are a few concepts which are particular to the Drupal community. So actually, what the community is, this is a community. It's about people. It's about a lot of people. Uh, we are constantly growing as a group. Uh, we are uh, a global group. A network of people uh, around the globe working together on this great project, which is Drupal. It's actually also about sharing. It's about sharing codes. Of course, when you start out working on Drupal and trying to do something for the community, first thing is, okay, I'm going to write code. I'm going to contribute code. It's about sharing knowledge. It's about talking to others, sharing ideas, teaching people who are starting out in the community on how to do things, learning people how to write code, giving feedback, teaching what you have learned over the past years. It's about sharing common goals and values, being open about what you do. It's uh, about friendship, of course. It's about uh, making new friends, friends because you're not, uh, well, uh, uh, as you are a hacker, you might have the idea of hackers, those are people who are sitting behind a desk writing code all day, not having any contact at all with their headphones on, while it's actually also about friendship and making great friends. Friends, Because um, when you're contributing uh, to the community, it's about learning people, learning to know people. So there's, of course, the Drupal projects, which you all know, which is open source, community driven, uh, with our beloved leader, Dries. So um, first question when you start out, uh, in a community, all those people, where can you find them? I think most people will know this, um, but I'm going to quickly go uh, through this. First stop is, of course, Drupal.org, which is this uh, platform where you can find uh, all the information on the project. And you have this convenient tab on top, community, and when you click on that, then you find a lot of information about where people are and you'll see that the community consists about uh, organizing events and meet it, meetups, such as Drupal Camp today. So on the ERC, on the chats, there are channels uh, on the ERC where you can join. I'm going to show them in a bit. There's, of course, Planet Drupal. Who knows Planet Drupal? I see one finger, two. Planet Drupal is a um, subsection of the site where you can find an aggregation of um, 
articles um, uh, aggregated from blogs uh, all over the internet who are writing about Drupal. So you see them on the right hand side collecting posts from the following 513 sources. Those are actually all blogs from well-known and lesser-known Drupalistas, but also from companies who are writing about Drupal on a regular basis. And actually this uh, Drupal Planet is uh, trying to aggregate them on a single page. So if you want to feel the pulse, the pulse uh, of the community and what's uh, on, their, on the community's mind, then actually trying to follow the Planet Drupal is a good way to start out. If you really want to know, want to keep up to speed, you should uh, follow this. Uh, you have, of course, um, let me go back, um, something like a community spotlight, um, which is uh, a news page on Drupal.org which, hi which highlights or makes or takes interviews of uh, uh, well-known Drupal rock stars, uh, trying to, to know them, the people behind the code, and the people who, the, to know the people behind uh, Drupal. Uh, and there's of course uh, for forums. There are a lot of forums on Drupal.org where you can find assistance. Um, the forums is actually interesting because if you want to get involved into Drupal, then uh, this is a great to, place to start out to ask questions, but also to give back to the community by uh, uh, posting messages on a regular basis and so on and so forth. Um, there are mailing lists and of course, last but not least, there's a Drupal association. Who knows a Drupal association or has heard about the Drupal association? A few, okay. The Drupal association is a, a non-profit organization uh, with a global reach uh, who tries to foster Drupal uh, over the whole world. So they provide, um, they are actually the people who are running Drupal.org. Uh, who provide the infrastructure behind Drupal.org, um, who maintain Drupal.org. They are also the people who uh, work together with uh, local organizers uh, to set up Drupal camps, but also uh, DrupalCon, who has heard of DrupalCon. The Drupal conference, which is a yearly or biannual um, uh, conference um, where all Drupal people of the of, uh, the world gathered together. The next one is in two weeks in Prague, uh, which will feature about 3,000 Drupalistas from all over the world, uh, which come together to work on Drupal, talk about Drupal, and share knowledge, uh, attend Drupal sessions, and so on and so forth. Same thing as Drupal Camp, but done on a larger, larger scale. This is all organized by the Drupal Association. And you can actually join the Drupal Association uh, by becoming a member or, or making a donation. It's also a great way to uh, to do something for the community and do something back for Drupal without actually sharing any code. So um, there's of course social media. A lot of Drupalistas are on Twitter. So if you want to follow um, uh, what's happening at this right this moment, this instance um, uh, uh, about Drupal, then you should follow Twitter. There's a lot of uh, discussion going on on Twitter about Drupal. Um, I have my Twitter account, of course, it's always open. And uh, you see there's, like Greg Harvey is a great uh, Drupal Vista. Um, there are others, of course. Um, Imre is a Drupal Vista. Who else? Um, I saw someone else there. Uh, Sebastian Siemens. Fubi, who is a core developer, tweets also on a reg regular basis. So it's actually a great uh, tool. Twitter is a great tool to follow up on the community and see what's happening. And uh, there are regular calls for uh, help or when something is organized on ERC or when you can go to a mentoring session organized by someone. Twitter is a great way to, to pick into that. So how do you join the community? Um, of course, by contributing. Uh, and when we talk about contributions, the first thing, of course, is codes. I don't know how many people are here write codes. One, two, three, four, five, six, several, okay. Um, so the first thing, obviously, is uh, contributing code to Drupal itself. If you know the Drupal framework, there are the Drupal core, and then the Drupal modules, and Drupal themes, uh, and so on and so forth. 
So you might be inclined to say, okay, I'm going to write some great code for the Drupal project and I'm going to share it and people are going to use my code and um, okay, everybody's going to be happy. But actually, um, when you start out and you want to write code for Drupal, um, actually collaboration is a key here. Um, Drupal is a collaborative uh, community, which means that uh, people work together on the projects and that you that it's, it's sometimes hard to just jump in with your own code and say, hey, I've writ write, written this great piece of code. Um, and you expect some feedback on that. And sometimes you won't get any feedback at all because people just don't notice what you're do doing. Actually, it's the other way around. You start out by reading up on a lot of articles, reading up on issues, reading up on what's currently hot in the community, what's currently... Um, where help is needed, and then you start to pick in and say, okay, I want to do, uh, I want to pick up an issue, I want to do something, a question that's out there, a concrete problem that's out there that someone's struggling with, and I want to help out by participating and contributing a, a piece of code. And that's actually the best way to do uh, community contributions through code. Um, actually, there's a famous uh, speech, if you, um, there's a module for that. Um, when you start out contributing, there's this vast pool of modules and you might be inclined to say, okay, I'm going to write my own cool contributed module for Drupal.org for the Drupal project and everybody's going to use it. Uh, I would say don't do that um, because there's already so much out there and most use cases are covered. So there's a module for that. It's actually a, a pretty good catchphrase which is used pretty often in the, the community. Actually, most code in Drupal is contributed through patches. Um, the concept of a patch is that uh, you look at some code, you do a few minor improvements or a few major improvements, depending on what you're looking at. Might be a bug fix, might be a new feature you write to something that already exists out there. Um, it all happens when um, while communicating with uh, with other Drupal coders and you uh, provide your patch back into uh, on drupal.org, you publish it on drupal.org, and then the people who hold the keys to the code, to the, Drupal .org, to the Drupal core itself, or to the various modules are going to look at your code, give you some feedback, and in the end, take that code and put it back into the code base. Um, patches can be something of a one-liner, or it can be something very massive, for instance, the largest patches I've seen weigh in at half a megabyte of code and have been worked by a, a, a huge uh, um, groups of people. For instance, um, Drupal 8, some, some subsystems um, were uh, vastly improved over the past two years and uh, they have been improved through patches and uh, it takes two years and a lot of people to work on, a, on one patch and then it goes into the core. So that's not something that's, that's something of a collaborative, collaborative thing. Um, so where do we find those patches? If you talk patches, then we're talking about issues and the Drupal issue queue. Um, the working on code happens in the issue queue. Who has heard of the issue queue? Not a few people, okay. Uh, issue queues, um, when you start out in Drupal, I'm going to show you an issue queue. And you want to contribute on the Drupal project. The Drupal project itself, uh, Drupal itself is a project on Drupal.org. Most modules are, all modules are projects. Actually, Drupal.org is a collection of projects. And Drupal is one of those. And when you go to the project page, this is the, the project page for Drupal. Then you find uh, the latest stable versions of Drupal and of course the development releases of Drupal, where you can download it. But on the side here, you see this block issues for Drupal core, and this is where everything starts. Um, the same thing you would see for other projects and other modules. Um, if you have heard of the views module, which is actually an add-on for Drupal, it's actually the same thing here, the same, uh, you have a project page, you see who's maintaining views, those are actually the core developers who maintain the code base. And then you have issues, a block with issues for views or for this project. And when you click on all issues, 
you see here the number of issues who are open, the total number of issues, and then bug reports. When you click on this, you get a list of open issues. Those are actually, this is actually a list of bug fixes, um, proposals for features, questions for documentation. Uh, pretty much anything goes. If you have something related to the views project, like a great new feature that you, you want to incorporate or you, you came across this problem and you want to, to, have, you want to, uh, to provide some feedback, then this is actually the place to go. And you see here a lot of issues, titles like minute pager outputs, empty next and previous uh, elements, which are bu which is a bug report. Uh, when you click on the title, then you get to the detail page of the issue. You get the issue summary, which tel tells you about the problem. So suppose I'm working on a, on a website and I'm like, okay, I'm having this problem, then this is the place to go. This is going to describe you the problem and perhaps it's going to give you a solution. In this case, someone already provided a patch with a solution to the problem. Um, you can download the patch like this. You see a lot of code. You see where code has been changed by the minuses and the pluses. You can take that and take it to your own project. Or you can review it and say, okay, this code worked for me. When I try it on my own project, this solves my problem. And then you can say, okay, this patch works. And you can set the status of this issue to reviewed and tested by the community from this review. So you can actually change statuses and so on and so forth. Um, and then when you um, change the status to, uh, for instance, reviewed and tested by the community because you have reviewed the patch, which is also a great way of com community contributing, reviewing patches. In the end, this will be picked up by one of the original authors of the views module and they'll say, okay, this has been tested. To me, this looks okay. I'm going to take this patch. I'm going to incorporate it back into the main code base of the views module. And actually contributing to the Drupal core project works in a similar fashion. Uh, when we go back to the Drupal project page, you see there are a lot of more issues, of course. When you click on them, you'll see the entire issue queue. You see there's a lot going on here. In the past three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, six minutes, there's constantly working, constantly work being performed on uh, Drupal. You can see that here. This is what they call the drop is always moving. This is what they mean. This is uh, you can see actually how Drupal evolves through the issue queue. Issues being uh, um, added, issues being solved, issues being discussed. It all happens here in this part, the Drupal issue queue. I'm not going to get any deeper on this at the moment because I only have an hour and I can discuss this uh, during a whole day, so I'm not going to get any deeper into this. But I would recommend looking into this and take a look and try browsing through the issues to get a general idea about what's it all about. But if I were you, I would start out with some smaller projects because they tend to evolve a little bit slower, so it's much easier to pick in and start contributing patches. Second thing is, of course, uh, your personal Drupal.org profile. So um, when you want to help out in the issue queue and want to start uh, providing feedback and comments and, and, and code, then you have to have your own personal login. And when you're logged in on Drupal.org, you see I'm logged in as Natsensei, as my <laughs> own user. Most people have their own handle. I have my own personal dashboard. And on my own personal dashboard, I get an overview of what's going on on Drupal.org. I can see a list of my posts. Most of these are issues, issues where I have contributed something, sometimes a patch, sometimes a comment, forum posts where I might have added a, or left a comment. Those will all be left here and I can see like updated here if there are any any follow-up on, on those posts. Uh, you can see also the Planet Drupal, a little blog where new articles are constantly uh, being published. My own issues, you can see the different um, core statuses, if it is green, then it's reviewed and tested by the community. So this is great because this patch might uh, be committed uh, or might be incorporated in the field collection module at any time now by the original authors. You see here, Drupal core, that there is an issue I'm following about taxonomy terms and that it's still uh, in the works. 
So that's for me a great way to follow up on that, on what's going on there. Um, so yes, this dashboard is actually uh, quite important. There's your own profile page, uh, which is also important because this is where you actually present yourself to the community and you tell to others, okay, this is what I'm doing at the community. You see, I'm a member, an individual member of the Drupal Association. I'm also uh, part of a, support, a supporting partner of the Drupal Association. This, these two batches are added because I am a member of uh, CEO, comp the company, which uh, is actually a supporting partner of the Drupal Association. So that's why th those batches are on my profile. I have a little bit of personal information. This is great if people want to contact me, and people do contact me via, via this uh, profile what I'm doing, what I'm into, and of course, more importantly, the number of projects or modules I'm actually active in as a maintainer or where I'm, act where I'm acti actively trying to contribute uh, patches or commits into. Okay, so this is my profile. There's a lot more to this, um, but um, there's actually great documentation on uh, Drupal.org on how this all functions. So I'm not going to go deeper at this time. So um, when you're in uh, the uh, issue queue and you start reviewing patches, uh, there are a few tools which make life a little bit easier on you when you're looking at code. A great tool is the Drupal editor or the Dreaditor. Um, I was just in an issue queue and I was, okay, I want to review a patch. For instance, um, I'm going to take an issue which has a few patches. So this is an issue with, again, the description of my issue and then comments on that, uh, people talking about sometimes giving a little bit of example of code. And then here we have um, a patch which was attached with a solution. I can, can click on the link and then I get the patch code in my browser, but this isn't really helpful because this is actually just dumb code and I can't really comment on that or do anything with this. There is this great Drupal plugin which is called uh, the Dreaditor project and which gives you uh, these three, these two helpful buttons uh, and when I click on review I get this fold out with the same code and now I can start um, copying, pasting, um, hiding deletions, look at stuff. Um, I can take something and I can say okay maybe I want to do something with this. So this is actually a browser plugin which allows me to review codes and uh, look at patches uh, uh, a lot quicker and a lot easier. So I would recommend um, using the Dreaditor or looking at this project. You can find it here uh, on like this. And it's actually moved to a separate site now, um, which also happens and it allows you to install the Chrome extension just like that on Chrome and then you can easily start reviewing patches and all that. There's of course simply test.me um, which is actually a, a separate website and it allows you to evaluate Drupal projects online and this is actually a, a good um, a site, uh, what, what does it do? It gives you uh, Drupal sandboxes. Um, suppose I want to test or look at a, at, a, at a module. I don't want to install Drupal each time, download the module, start looking at the code, start looking at patches and all that and, and trying to get them on my laptop, on my own Apache MySQL PHP installation. No, this actually is, uh, this is a website which does all that for you with a few single with a few uh, simple commands. For instance, if I want to look at the... Uh, um, I'm going to try to find a good project. Let's say, well... Uh, well, yes, Views is mo most common Views module. Enter a project, I can select a version and then I say Launch Sandbox and it will start to create for me a, a sandbox site. So this is going to give me a site with the views module installed, uh, ready to go, ready to test, and I don't have to install anything on my laptop or 
uh, I have to go through all the motions of applying patches to code and all that. It just does, does this for me. So this is actually very handy if you want to help out, if you want to review code, if you want to start test, testing patches without uh, all the intricacies of knowing how to install uh, Drupal. So now I can just start looking at this. I'm going to modules. And then if I go to the bottom of the site, I can see the views module is already there, installed and enabled, and I can start testing. So that simply tests me in a few moments uh, when I'm ready and I'm done and I'm not using the sandbox anymore, it's going to be cleared and deleted afterwards. So this is actually, this is temporary. So um, if you want to create patches yourself, uh, if you want to write code yourself, then you should uh, start learning how to use Git. You should uh, um, Git is a uh, um, tool which allows you to um, um, manage code in a code repository, uh, just like you have Subversion, Mercurial, Bazaar, and a lot of other uh, tools which allow you to manage code. And Git is actually used in Drupal to manage the code base. So. Drupal, the code is all uh, stored in a central repository and this repository is managed by this tool called Git. And Git is uh, something that you need to install on your laptop before you can start um, uh, working. And uh, there's actually this great tutorial written by uh, Justine Luisi um, which allows you, uh, which, which gives you an explanation on how to create patches for Drupal projects. This, is, this information is, is also available on Drupal.org but I found that this, um, this tutorial is a lot more verbose on how patches work and also a lot more verbose on, on which tools to use because most of uh, the code of, of reviewing patches and working with Git happens command line but there are of course great GUI tools like Tower or Source Tree I'm going to launch Source Tree for a moment so you can see what Source Tree is. Uh, this is Source Tree. It's actually a tool which allows you to view commits and code within the um, within the Drupal within within the repository. Um, this is my own blog at the moment. Um, but those tools, the point is, those tools, those GUIs make it more easier for you to manage code and see what's happening and creating patches on all that. And Jacine is explaining this in uh, this great blog post, so I would recommend reading up on that if you want to create your own patches and how to do that. Of course, there's the moment when you've had enough of contributing patches and you actually want to start uh, working on your own project. Um, rather than starting your own project, I would re uh, recommend looking at uh, existing projects which are looking for co-maintainers. Um, a lot of Drupal projects out there, um, the original maintainer, the original uh, um, developer, um, don't have, don't, doesn't have the time to, to, to work, to maintain the module, to provide security patches, to keep up with development. So there are always projects out there who are looking for co-maintainers. And there's this list of projects here. It says seeking co-maintainers. And um, for instance, Path Auto Suggestion is, is such a product. Uh, seeking co-maintainers. So if you're willing, if you have the time and if the project is something that, that, that interests you, that incre intrigues you, that you say, okay, this is something that I want to do, then you can step up to the plates, then you can start, then, then you can go to the issue queue and say, okay, I'm, I've seen you're looking for a co-maintainer. I'm uh, willing to become a co-maintainer. And what does this entail? It entails that um, the uh, original maintainer is going to give you access uh, to the repository of the project, so you, you yourself can directly commit code to the project itself, rather than to create a patch, wait till somebody has reviewed it, uh, until somebody uh, is, uh, uh, until the original maintainer passes through the issue queue, which can take sometimes a lot of time, and uh, he commits your code because that's sometimes a frustrating thing. You contribute something, and it takes half a year before your code gets committed. This Thing, those things happen and by uh, trying to be a co-maintainer for other, other projects you help further those uh, by taking over and helping out where you can. Uh, me, myself, I've become a co-maintainer for instance for a project called um, uh, the Drupal Commerce 
Drupal Commerce uh, Manager, Display Manager, which is actually a tool uh, which allows you to um, easily uh, um, map products to product displays. If you're into Drupal Commerce, uh, you'll know what I'm talking about. But the point is, uh, this project was uh, was uh, uh, has great potential. I was using it. A lot of other people are using it. But the, the the original maintainer didn't have the time to keep up with it. So I've taken over. I've become a co-maintainer myself, and I started to push commits and started to uh, to maintain the, the issue queue, um, looking for issues, responding to them, um, and trying to review patches which are submitted in this queue. And then I'm that this is my way of contributing back to the community by maintaining this module. Um, an important part is uh, the level of expected engagement because if you want to be a co maintainer, um, try to see if you are uh, pushed to uh, take over the entire module. Or someone is saying, okay, um, we're working on the Drupal 8 version, but there's no time for someone to maintain the Drupal 7 or the Drupal 6 branch, um, and there's still questions going on there. So try to see what people expect of you if you really want to become a co-maintainer before you're, you're saying, okay, I'm cool, I'm going to head into the issue queue. So there's also starting out a new project. Um, and uh, if you really want to, you really have this great idea and you want to start out, then um, the first thing you should do is start out with a sandbox. And sandboxes can be created easily, again, uh, there's this um, tutorial page on how to do that. Um, but the tutorial starts out by uh, going to your dashboard, uh, going to uh, your projects, and when you click on that, then you see all your projects which have, you are maintaining, or you, uh, you've created yourself, you started out that. And uh, you have this block sandbox projects, and then projects themselves. And there's a difference between them. Sandbox projects are mostly just projects, uh, for instance, this one, uh, which looks like the same like any other project. Uh, it has a project page, it has issues, and so on and so forth. The difference is that it doesn't have any formal releases, and that, um, that it's actually saying that it's a sandbox and that it might contain experimental code. The moment that you say, okay, I want to turn my sandbox into something more, something which can, uh, release uh, stable releases, stable stable code. Then you have to promote your sandbox to an, a, a full a full project, and this is something. Uh, it's also not easy to do because you have to um, you have to apply um, your, you have to apply for a full promotion in an issue queue, and then someone has to review your projects and go through all the motions to promote your project, uh, so you can create formal releases. Um, and the page I showed you here, creating a sandbox, just tells you how to do that. But the sandbox projects are actually a great way to start out testing out IDs without having to create stuff on GitHub or if you're not sure where I should, should maintain your code, then the sandbox is the tool for you. So um, starting out a new project is great because it allows you to get your name known, uh, people see how you use your code, and it allows you to learn valuable lessons about how to write code, about managing code, about collaboration and communication, because the moment you start out as a maintainer of a project and you're, you need to promote your project, you're going to, to uh, end up dealing with people. So um, there's a lot more than just writing code. Um, but the downside of those is that actually when you start out on a new project that it, ta that it takes time and with time it, it also becomes a responsibility and it can be demanding at times. Um, I'm also involved in uh, another non-Drupal uh, open source project um, and it's, it's a, a rather large one and um, it takes time. It's, it's an engagement that you've taken and it's not something that you can say, okay, I'm not going to do this anymore because people will ask ask where are you, uh, we need this, um, so that's something that you have to keep in mind. And also when you're working on a project and you have your, just your release for Drupal 7, Drupal 8 is going to be released next year, then you start already, you, you're going to have at a certain point, you're going to have to port your module, so you have to 
keep into mind that you have to make time for that also. So, um, yes, responsibility, there's a responsibility there. Um, when you're about uh, an, an, an interesting uh, project um, that you might want to follow when we're talking about all the stuff I just uh, discussed, then the DrupalLadder.org is a great uh, site. What is this, DrupalLadder.org? It's a site um, with, it's actually a community in initiative uh, by WebChick, I believe, um, which is one of uh, the core maintainers of Drupal. Um, and um, the goal of the Drupal Ladder is um, to have 1% of the Drupal community contributing to Drupal Core by 2014. And actually, uh, the DrupalLadder.org project uh, teaches you how to contribute by, for instance, organizing, um, how to run issue sprint, learn how, to, how sprints are organized, but more importantly, um, what is a ladder? A ladder is... Um, well, a ladder of steps, uh, for instance, there's a lot of spam, of course. Git basics, for instance, because I was talking about Git and how to use Git to contribute code. So these are actually the steps you need to take before you can roll your own patches and, uh, and, and cleanly apply them to Drupal. So if you follow those, those will explain you how to do that. So the DrupalLadder.org is a great introduction to the community on how to start contributing code because those are ladders with instructions on how to do just that. There are also a lot of resources, there are lessons, um, and so on and so forth, tutorials, um, presentations. Uh, I really recommend looking at this if you're starting out. Uh, it's a great resource, the Drupal Ladder. So knowledge, uh, and I'm going to have to move a little bit quickly, um, because it's not always not only about sharing knowledge. It's also about sharing uh, uh, code. It's also about sharing knowledge. It's about learning and sharing. So learning what uh, from other people, and then sharing what you have been taught to others. And when you start out learning, um, there are there are various uh, methods of learning. First, of self study, of course. Self study is uh, the the best way of, of, uh, of learning to work with Drupal. I've learned most of Drupal back in during Drupal 5, Drupal 6, and I had, had to teach it myself because I didn't know anybody at the time uh, who could teach me, so I had to teach myself. Uh, today in the community, there's a, a great reach out via mentors. So uh, on Drupal.org, you can go out on ERC, you can go out and start asking people, okay, can someone explain this or that to me? And there's actually a tendency in the community that, uh, that if someone asks something, then um, generally you get an answer. People tend to, if a question is well formed, then people tend to explain this uh, to you, and people are happy to explain stuff to you. There's ob obviously dedicated training, um, especially when you're working in a Drupal firm, then um, if you get a chance to get some dedicated training, that, that is also great. And of course, there's events like this, where uh, uh, you can learn a lot um, and there are also training sessions. I believe there are training sessions today, Kickstart Drupal from out in the block. Um, uh, and I believe there's also Drupal training from Drop Solid, I believe, today. So events are a great way to get started with Drupal. So when you start learning Drupal, it's a vast project. Uh, where do you start? I would say start by picking a concrete problem, something that you encountered while working on a, a, a project that you really uh, intrigued, that you really want to succeed, and then try to learn about that. So suppose you want to work on a web shop, then that's a concrete problem. You want to build a web shop, then you're going to look for solutions. You'll probably land on uh, on Drupal Commerce. So that's how you learn by looking for real use cases in the in, uh, in what you do and then take that back and try to expand your knowledge. An important thing is of course that don't pick anything from the list, uh, for instance any abstract API and just say okay I want to learn something about fields. If you don't really into the fields API in Drupal that's something pretty abstract and it's going to put you off from Drupal so always try especially in the beginning try to begin with something really concrete something that's really 
coming from your own world, something that really nags you, something that you can relate to your, uh, your daily life, your daily work. Um, I don't want to finish this time. <laughs> um, there's of course a lot of documentation out there, Drupal.org, so I would say take a look at that. Um, mentors, I've been talking about those. Um, then of course when you start out, start with a blog. Um, start blogging. Register a blog. Uh, don't think about layouts and all that, just think about content. My own blog is a great tool for me to learn stuff because when I'm writing about something I'm going to do research and that brings me further to new topics and new fields of research because I'm writing about stuff. So blogging is a great way to learn and at the same time you're reaching out, you're sharing your, what you've learned. Um, again, look for daily annoyances, keep a list of topics, use Wunder lists, use Moleskine, use Evernote. Um, those are great tools. You can, can, can keep up with uh, lists of things and then start writing about them on a later moment. Um, if you're into screencasts, it's also a great way uh, to contribute back. Screencasts are little videos, 5 to 10 minutes. Um, get a good microphone. Uh, look again for a topic that intrigues you and make a screencast. Put it on YouTube. There are already a lot of videos out there. So if you can't find a video, then Creating your own screencast is a great way to contribute back because screencasts are very verbose and most often interest, more interesting than uh, an, ar an article. Uh, there are a lot of notable examples of screencasts. Uh, people who do screencasts about Drupal like Code Karate, uh, the screencast session on Note 1, Master Seeds. Take a look at those. Of course, there's speaking, which is uh, can be quite daunting, but actually. Um, Speaking is a great way um, to uh, contribute back. It's something I'm doing right now, contributing back to the community, speaking at a Drupal user group about a topic. Um, it, it doesn't have to really be something technical. I'm not talking about something technical right now, but I'm still contributing in a way. Um, pick, some, pick something you're into, start preparing in time and practice. And actually you don't have to be put don't have to be scared because you probably do better than you think. Uh, I know a lot of people don't like to speak, but I don't like to speak either. Yet I'm still here and... Okay, I've learned that it's not something you should be fearful about, so you're probably better than you think. Um, but of course, contributing, there are always impediments, uh, a lot of excuses like, okay, I have family life, there are other activities. I already do enough Drupal at work. Um, Okay, work for me ends at 5 p.m. I just don't care. I've heard them all when I talk about contributing to the community. A um, lot of people are uh, enthusiastic, but there is also a, lot of, uh, a large group of people who just use Drupal but work in the back. And any, uh, every, every one of those excuses is actually valid. Um, just because um, it's a matter of time, contributing takes time and effort. So, um, and it can be very demanding. So, how do you deal with those? Try to be realistic about the available time. Don't be over ambitious. Don't say, okay, I'm going to write a lot of patches for Drupal or I'm going to start out with my own uh, module. Those actually take a lot of time. It's better to prioritize and do something that you can do right now. For instance, contribute in less than 30 minutes. You can contribute in less than 30 minutes during your daily commute by writing a small article, writing a tweet, um, retweeting an article, um, uh, reviewing a patch, trying to comment on an issue in the forum, um, try to look for uh, uh, times when you, can, when you can do that. Those 30 minutes might be lost when you're waiting for a train um, or instead of watching TV. I don't watch any TV at the moment anymore just because I think this is more interesting than watching the next dumb show on TV. Um, important is when you're uh, working on Drupal that, uh, and you're contributing that you might be uh, a bit put off by all those other core com all contributors who are doing a lot more than you. But actually you shouldn't because it's not a com competition. You might feel, <coughs> feel pressure. I have felt that pressure about contributing that it felt like a competition because there's all these issues going on. I have to follow them all. But actually it's not a competition. 
So just do it on your own tempo and do what feels good to you. That's important because then you're actually more productive than when you're like, okay, I have to get home because I have to contribute to this great patch and if I don't, then... Uh, no, it's not a competition. That's important. <laughs> Keep in mind. Um, and then, of course, this why should I contribute? Okay. I have to stop. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I have five more minutes or no? Okay. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. I'm going to finish in 30 seconds. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to let this, uh, I'm going to put this up on the slide share so you can look at why you should com contribute. Um, that's it for me. This is the way why I should practice. Are there standards to follow when yes. contribute? Uh, yes, there are coding standards. Yes. yes. Um, actually, yes. There is a module for that indeed. When you type in Drupal coding standards on Google, okay. always use Google if you have a question, it's all there. There are coding standards which um, tell you everything you need to know about how to format your code. And of course, there's a module for that. <laughs> uh, it's called the coder module. Um, when you install this on uh, your site and you're writing code, um, then you have a button like review code and then it's going to give you a list of your codes and anything that's not uh, um, conforming with the coding standard. So if you're working on Drupal first timer, use a coder module.